like this or dressed like this. Again, not that it matters. Even if he was really pulling off the look, it wouldn't make it okay to be in the locker room. But he's not doing that much. Let's keep watching. Faith on this scary transgender woman who was misgendered. And despite threats of violence, Wood says she's not scared. No, I, I know how to give an insult out, and I know what areas to kick and punch. You know, at least enough to be able to run till I can get to my car and get out of here. And at the meeting, she'll have the support of her awkward sisters. Um, my husband and I are thinking about putting some signs together that say we support Christy, so that we have, you know, the visual friendship through thick and thin. Austin Brad is joining me now. Austin, I feel like a big part of the story that either been a misconception or people are just forgetting about is that Wood has fully transitioned into a woman and was in the woman's bathroom. Yeah, that's right, Wally. In fact, she said she is a woman and she really wants to drive home the Oh, she said this. Over five she says years it. ago. Um, and that, you know, he she, says she, is a, she is a woman and, and she says she's a woman, period. Yeah. That's where it ends. Absolutely. And let's transition ourselves into the other side of the oh, that oh. you know, like said, What are we hearing from her? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, I did not see that he was here last night at the protest, and I have tried to get in touch with her. I left a message yesterday at her workplace, but I have not had a, a phone call back. Certainly, we would like to speak to her, but I haven't heard from her, and I haven't heard any more public comments from her. It will be interesting to see if she comes out to that city council meeting next week. Certainly, she's already had her voice heard there. Now, Wood is going to have her voice heard there as well. It would be interesting to see if the two were there at the same time. Absolutely. You you definitely want to hear from that 17 year old and how she's even responding to the protest. Austin, thank you very much. You're Let's welcome. dive deeper into that part of the story and how this incident got into the public limelight last week. That 17 year old girl that we were just talking about, her name is Rebecca Phillips. She got up to speak at okay. the Santee City Council. Oh, I don't know how much longer it's good one. So, they're remarking on the fact that they can't get a hold of the 17-year-old girl. And both of these, both of these uh, so-called journalists there, oh, we try to get a, a hold of her. We, we can't get a, She's not talking to us. I wonder why. I wonder why she's not talking to us. I don't know. 17-year-old girl being smeared as a bigot by the media. Like, you, you've already come out against her. You, you're right now coming out against her by affirming the pervert male as a woman. How do we know he's a woman? Well, because he said so. And I think that's really important to clarify. Just to clarify, you know, uh, this, this person says, says she's a woman, period. Said it. That's it. It was said. So that's all. Fully transitioned, where, where we are informed. He fully transitioned. This is a full transition. So what else are we supposed to say? There's, uh, there's, there's, that's it. That's the period. They put the end of the, they said period. That's the end of the discussion. So after saying that, then they called the 17-year-old girl and said, hey, by the way, we're at the media. Uh, we wanted to know why you're such a disgusting bigot. Hey, can you give us a call back, 17-year-old girl, and let us know. We want to know why are you such a transphobic bigot that's going to cause this poor trans woman to kill herself. We wanted to know more of the details about your bigotry. Please give us a call back. These people are beneath content. Utter scum. And that's, you know, and I'm, I'm even angrier, as always, at, the, at, at everyone else in this that we've seen. You know, in this story, I'm angry at everyone else, even aside from the guy dressing up as, as a woman. I mean, he's the number one call, call for him, of course. He's a pervert predator and should be in prison for sexually harassing minor girls. He should simply be in prison for that for the rest of his life. This is not someone that we need in society. He's not doing anything to help society. We don't, we don't need him. And so we should just throw him in a cage and lock him and keep him there at a minimum. But then you look at everybody else. I mean, how, they, we, we heard from the woman. It's like an older woman. Imagine being like you're an actual woman. Okay, you're you are a, a real woman, and you see, you hear a story about a man disrobing and exposing himself to a 17 year old girl, and you take the man's side. All right, let's watch a little more of this. It's sparking the debate. Here's some of what she had to say. As I was showering after my workout, I saw a naked male in the women's locker room. I immediately went back into the shower, terrified, and hid behind their flimsy excuse for a curtain until he was gone. I was made to feel as though I had done something wrong when I talked to people at the YMCA. Somehow, the indecent exposure of a male to a female minor was an inconvenience to them. I mean, I... I 
how deranged do you have to be? We just saw, they only gave us a, a you know, a short snippet of the 17 year old girl, but you've got, you've got her on one hand, and even in that 10 seconds they show of her address at the city council meeting, we can tell that she's a 17 year old girl, normal person who had to witness this hideous, disgusting excuse for a man disrobing in front of her, and she was quite traumatized by it and afraid, as any 17-year-old girl would be, any woman would be, any, any, any female would be in that situation. So you've got her on one hand. The other hand, you've got the Dennis Rodman look like. How deranged do you have to be? Like, in what state does your soul have to be in to see these two people and come to the conclusion that the dude is in the right, that you're on the dude's side. But what makes it really evil, you know, this is my point, what makes it really evil is that I don't believe that anyone actually does think that the guy is in the right. And I, I don't believe that. The two anchors or reporters we saw there, I, I don't think that any of them are looking at this guy and thinking, well, oh, yeah, that's a woman, all right. That's a woman if I ever saw one. None of them. They're going along with it. Ideological, what's All right. Similar uh, subject here is the report from the Daily Wire. United Nations Women's Rights Committee rejected a pro life organization's request to screen the Daily Wire's What is a Woman after declaring the groundbreaking documentary did not align with the panel's values. The Committee on the Status of Women, um, referred to within the global body as NGO CSWNY and a convener for the United Nations Annual Meeting on Women's Rights, rejected the International Youth Coalition's request to hold a screening of the film starring Matt Walsh at an upcoming conference because it did not adhere to their new guidelines. This is uh, the, the UN, at this committee associated with the UN, uh, they're saying we, we can't screen what is Unfortunately, your request to host an event has been denied as your event does not align with NGO CSWNY's values and or mandate. The summary rejection stunned Austin Roos, president of the Center for Family and Human Rights, Youth Coalition's parent organization. He, uh, he said, quote, how, how ironic is it that a conference on women does not want to consider the question, what is a woman? It's also unfortunate that this UN conference is not interested in diverse voices. Now, obviously, nobody is surprised that the UN is not interested in having my film screened. Uh, I don't think anyone's surprised by that. I'm not surprised to learn that it doesn't align with the UN's guidelines. I agree, in fact, that it does not align with their with their with their guidelines or their values. In fact, I would be embarrassed. I, I would I would be not just embarrassed. I'd be ashamed, I'd be ashamed if they if they were actually allowed to screen. If the UN said, oh yeah, that, we we have no problem with that one. Yeah, that that, that adheres to our values. I probably, I think I would retire from the business, I think at that point, I, I would have to, if I found out that I made a film that adheres to the UN's guidelines, I would have to retire and show. So in a certain way, I'm quite relieved that they turned it down. But that doesn't change the irony here or how absurd it actually is. That this is a, keep in mind the, the name of the committee or the conference, it's not, it's not simply the committee for women or whatever, it's, it's the committee about the status of women. That's what they're interested in, the status of women. And so if we want to examine the status of women in the world, then probably the first question we need to answer is, um, what are they and do they exist to begin with? That's a, if, you're, if you're trying to figure out anyone's status, the first thing you need to know is whether uh, that person or that type of person exists. And that's something that, that's a, that is, at a, at, at a minimum, a live question on the list. We're not quite sure. Not quite sure if women exist to begin with in any kind of meaningful sense. But that's not a question that they want to obviously examine at the UN. Next up at our daily cancellation, we'll be canceling Shikari Richardson after her ridiculous outburst that she posted on Instagram. We'll be right back. You know when you start up a motorcycle and you hear it go boom, boom, boom when it takes off? I was losing that. I was losing my energy, like everybody does as they grow older. But I don't want to be tired. I don't want to look tired, and I don't want to be tired. I started using Balance of Nature about a year and a half ago. Noticed the results immediately, and I went, oh my gosh, this works. This is what I've been missing all my life. <laughs> I'm loving life actually more than I ever, ever have. 
I miss my Baba Blue. I got it back. Experience the balance of nature difference for yourself. See why Kathy Lee Gifford and thousands of others have had life-changing success with balance of nature. Take advantage of our New Year's offer while you still can. Call 1-800-246-8751 or go to balanceofnature.com. That's 1-800-246-8751 and get $25 off plus a free fiber and spice when you use discount code KLG. Attention, per the current government mandate, U.S.-based insurers are now required to cover at-home COVID testing kits every month with no out-of-pocket fees to you. If you have a current insurance plan, you are eligible to receive up to eight COVID-19 tests shipped to your home or business each month absolutely free. Just visit testkitforfree.com to begin the registration process. When completed, Tierra Health, a trusted source for next-generation health care, will submit a claim to your insurance provider. There is no deductible and no copay. Your Eight monthly tests will ship directly to your home or business for free. Go to testkitforfree.com. 19 and its variants are still here, so take the worry out of searching for time-sensitive tests by registering you and your family today. Visit testkitforfree.com to register from the comfort of your own home. That's testkitforfree.com to receive eight COVID-19 tests shipped to you at no cost. Just visit testkitforfree.com today. Paid for by Tiero Health. Are you looking for a safer way to invest? The Freedom Fund at Pacific Private Money offers flexible investing opportunities. I'm Mark Hanf, CEO of Pacific Private Money, and I invite you to hear what Tim has to say about our Freedom Fund. Pacific Private Money provides my ideal balance of security and liquidity, giving me steady monthly income and a profitable RA, backed by solid real estate holdings. The Freedom Fund earns nearly seven times the return available from the best bank savings account and still allows me access to my money as needed. I personally prefer investing with a trustworthy company backed by real estate than the volatile upsets of the stock market. You too can be earning consistent returns on your savings or retirement accounts. Give us a call to learn more. 415-926-4444. 415-926-4444. Or visit us at PacificPrivateMoney.com. Do not talk to me like that. 
said, tell him to stop. If you do not know what's going on, do not yell at me. You can stop recording. No, I'm not going to stop recording because I was making a video to myself. Stop recording. I'm going to not stop recording. Oh and this video will show what I'm doing. So I'm going to Who the f*** are you talking we to, Bill? Thank you. Why did you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, again with the, the taking the video in public thing. Why, why are you taking a video to begin with on your flight? Oops. No one cares that you're you're on a flight. You're, you're taking a flight. No, we. That's not interesting. Why do you think that needs to be documented? Not everything needs to be documented. Okay, we don't need we don't need documentation, especially not all the documentation anyone does anymore is of their face. It's a selfie or selfie video. Here's my face on a plane. Here's my face doing this. Here's my face walking down the street. Nobody cares. It's not interesting. And I know that I sound like a hypocrite. I'm in front of the camera every single day, but that's also my job. And I can tell you, even in my job, like it, it, trust me, you see too much of me as it is. It could be a lot worse. I mean, all the time I've got social media, the social, social media team here telling me, oh, you should do this video doing this or that. We need a selfie video of you doing this. I'm not doing that. No one needs to see that. It's, it's not interesting. Like, I got, give me a reason why I should be on camera. Some reason and I'll do it. But. We don't need, you don't need to have your face on camera every second of the day. Now in the second video, which I won't force you to watch, she argues with another passenger who rightly blames her for holding up the plane and making him miss his connection. She chides him for um, not being chivalrous and, and you know, not standing up to defend her against the intimidating flight attendant. And he responds to her by saying, and I quote, I don't give a which is both an eloquent argument and the morally correct one in this situation. Eventually, Richardson is escorted off the plane while the other passengers applaud. But the fact that nearly everyone on the plane was against her and that she had inconvenienced over 100 people for no reason at all was not enough to convince her that she was herself the villain of the story. Instead, she posted both videos to Instagram while threatening legal action against the airline for committing the crime of, I guess, expecting her to follow the rules that everyone else has to follow. This is a theme for Richardson, right? She, she, she really has trouble with requirements that apply to everyone. You don't have to like the requirements, okay? But they apply to everyone, and no one else has a problem. Everyone else manages to follow them but you. Why is it a problem for you? Everyone else managed to not smoke weed and have to, had to go race in the Olympics. You had an issue with it. Everyone else manages to like not be taking a selfie video right before takeoff. For some reason, you can't hit and handle that. Indeed, she is personally re injured by these requirements. The requirements are an attack, not against everyone else who's just as subject to them, but against her, because she is her. She is Shikari Richardson, and she is the protagonist in the story of the human species. Now, fortunately, I don't have to go to great lengths, actually, in this cancellation to explain why Richardson is in the wrong, because it would seem that most people are on the same page on this one. Somewhat shocking. This is the part that surprised me. Richardson has not garnered much public support, even after playing both the race and gender card after the fact. An Instagram post that uh, diligently avoids anything resembling punctuation or proper sentence structure, Richardson wrote in part, tell me if I'll be wrong to pursue legal action against the airline, American Airlines. Not only did the man threaten me, but also an innocent bystander who simply just wanted a picture with me. In the beginning of the video, you can hear a Caucasian male state that he doesn't give a F as a man that male flight attendant is intimidating a woman. Also, the captain not doing anything to help the situation, and this flight attendant has the applause when I exited the plane when I'm pretty serious the disrespect I received would not have happened if I was a one, if I was a one of them. One of them as in a white male, I guess is what she, she meant to say. Because, of course, everyone on the plane would have been perfectly happy to miss their connecting flight if only the disturbance had been caused by a white male. I mean, I'll never forget the time it's actually happened a couple times when I, uh, I threw a temper, a random temper tantrum in first class, delayed the plane by 45 minutes, caused 32 passengers to miss their connection. And everyone in the plane, um, they were so proud of me, they shook my hands one by one to thank me for it, while the flight attendant showered me with free flight vouchers and extra bags of complimentary peanuts. That is a thing that definitely happened in real life and not just in the fevered, marijuana-soaked mind of Shikari Richards. Anyway, in this case, her victim routine seems to not be resonating as much as she had hoped with the public. It, it could be that the public has become suddenly intelligent and discerning, which seems to be, frank, extremely unlikely, or it could